Yes, honey. Mm-hmm. The Pied Piper. That was like, well, back in the day, what it meant. Um, I think that was Germany or somewhere. But a musician who led children to them by the sound of his uh, flute. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. We turn on the stuff, man. Mm-hmm. That's what a lot of people were saying. Uh, you know what Pied Piper means? Sure, that's what people um been saying for a long time, and I didn't even know what Pied Pied Piper meant. You know, mm-hmm. when I was younger, I didn't, I never knew what it meant. But mm-hmm. R. Kelly, um, I'm trying to think, how old is he? Now? Be me in middle school. I understand that. <laughs> Can't stand you. Oh my God. Oh, let me turn on the call in lines. <laughs> let me see if anybody watching yet. You a fool. Okay. Ain't nobody on yet. So let me uh matter of fact. Oh, I forgot to change the title. So I forgot to change the title. Hold up. Uh, go ahead. Um, I forgot to change the title. Uh, what's the name of the dog? Oh, surviving R. Kelly. I ha- I had the old title from an older video still on here. Part one and two. Review. From another Mr. Reviews. Okay, I got that in there. Now I'm going to turn on the phone line so I can make sure the phone line is on. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to Tanya and Samantha's uh, another another sisters from another mister reviews yes sir let me get these phone lines on please check in if you're watching please check in say hello say hi put your comments in the comment section especially especially if you um watched the show last night that was on lifetime channel parts one and parts two uh, surviving R. Kelly. Um, I think part three might come on tonight. I, I have to check. I'm not. I'm not certain, but I know I had set up my DVR to record all new episodes of this. So I do think it comes on tonight. I'm not sure though. But anyway, if it is, you know I'm going to come back to y'all again. If I'm sure it's another part. It's just I don't know if it's on tonight, tomorrow, whatnot. But anywho, um, again, welcome, welcome. Please hit that like button on your way in. Please make sure you uh, subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed to my channel. Thank you, honey. Hey, Miss Booker. She said hello, Sam and Samantha. <laughs> Hi, how are you? How you doing? Can you hear us okay? Okay, I'm going to put the phone right here so you can see the chat. Okay. I'm going to turn on the phone lines um, for anybody who wants to call in. I got the uh, access code and the... Uh, Phone number up there. Let me just get the phone lines on because we're definitely going to be taking calls. But um, I know you didn't watch the uh, show last night, but do you have any thoughts on this? just what you've been hearing over the years? You know, <laughs> all the way back to, you know, the Leah days and, you know, the marriage and anything like that. What's his wife? Wife was on. Oh, you talking about Andrea? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, she's been on like two or three, uh, two or three um TV shows, including um Sister Circle. Yes, she has. 
Yes, she has. We gonna we gonna get right into it though. Let me put on this conference. Put the conference code. Somebody told me to tag them uh, when we went live, and I forgot to tag them. So I hope they uh watching. I hope they got the notification. Okay, let me just get the uh conference code. No. Okay. I always forget my code. Okay, I think I did it right. Let me see. Uh, I hope ain't nobody already on the phone number <laughs> yet. Give me a second, y'all. I'm, I'm logging in onto the phone system. Number of attempts. Let me try it again. I got to call back. Come on, conference caller. I just put in the wrong code, so I just have to type it in. This service is provided in high definition by freeconferencecallhd.com. Please enter your access code followed by the pound or hash button. Access code accepted. Accepted. Yes, I'm You're in the there. Only participant in the I'm conference. in there. Okay. Okay, so the phone lines is on. And if y'all want to call in, the phone line is on, honey. So we can uh, get this in. Type in the comment section if you want to call in because right now I don't have a speaker attached to the phone because at elevator music is so disturbing um, when we're not uh, when we don't have anybody on the phone. Thank you, Miss Booker. I appreciate that. Um, I do believe he should be in jail too. Um, a lot of people uh, believe that he should be in jail. But um, I don't know. I don't know why. That's that's the biggest question. Like, I think he should be in jail. But then also, why during jail time, I think he needs some form of help. Mm -hmm. I mean, because a lot of it, he more than likely knew better than the things that he had done or whatever. But also, you got to look at that. He was. He's a celebrity, and people are looking at that money that he he has. Uh -huh. So sometimes things get swept under the rug until they come to the light. But also, he needs to be an adult on his side. End of it, too. Uh -huh. Now, I like me some R. Kelly, especially the Step in the Name of Love song. But... <laughs> <laughs> Step in the name of love. <laughs> he need to accept for his responsibility because <laughs> a lot of people do like that guy. And, I mean, and that's the thing. It's like kind of hard to take away from all that he's done, you know, talent wise, as far as music. Um, he's a musical genius. And it's hard to take that away from him. And that's why a lot of people find it hard to totally mute R. Kelly. Um, remember when they was trying to start that the mute yeah, R. Kelly yeah. and a that lot of the happen. radio stations, you know, have stopped playing him. And I, I don't know. I still got all his CDs. I ain't played him in a while, but I I ain't burnt them. <laughs> I ain't threw them out in the trash. <laughs> I still got those CDs too. But yeah, I don't know how to turn it off. I'm gonna try to figure it out. Uh, Figure it out um, because I did see somewhere where I think it was, who was it? It was somebody I was watching um, and they said something about you could turn the uh, music off on the uh, conference, but I, I don't want to get to fooling with that right now. I agree with Ms. Booker though on that part about, I, 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 don't, a little. I don't like him having uh, the part about him having sex with the kids either. I mean, R. Kelly is a, of course, like he he he's a good guy in other areas, but also he needs to, like I said before, he needs to be ready for the consequences that comes along with 
being a celebrity and doing some of the things that behind closed doors that get out in public. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now, um, I know as far as the show, a lot of the people uh, who actually came forward on the television show, they were just basically sick and tired, you know, of the rumors, just being rumors. And it's like we've been hearing about these rumors and allegations and you know, for years and years since we were children, you know, and they're tired of it just being rumors. Um, and I think that's it. A lot of people weren't taking everybody too seriously because they weren't like standing up for themselves, you know, and, and they figure, you know, I think with this movement, you know, the Me Too movement, I think this is probably what started this as well with Lifetime trying to, you know, be a play a part in this R. Kelly, you know, this is scandalous, scandalous. I guess we can call it that <laughs> scandalous. But, um, <laughs> but I was like, I'm just appalled at all the people who was surrounding him who never put a stop to what he was doing. Like I said, go back to probably money and uh-huh. hush. What they say back in the day, hush, hush money, hush up. Uh-huh. So you won't say nothing. <laughs> yep, I hear you. I, I get that too, Miss Booker. Um, it's not fair to totally mute him. You know, continue playing his music unless he's prosecuted. I get you. I just ain't played his music. It's not that I. I don't, you know, I don't listen to a lot of music lately because I just be so busy. If I'm not in my car or, you know, having to get together or something like that, I'm usually watching TV or working or baking or, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm a busy person. So I haven't listened to a lot of music. Matter of fact, I couldn't tell you who's hot last year. <laughs> you ain't alone. <laughs> I, I mean, I can tell you some celebrity gossip from some artists from last year, but I couldn't tell you who was hot, you know, who, you know, I knew Cardi did some things last year, but <laughs> other than that, <laughs> I couldn't tell you. <laughs> right, yeah, I heard a lot of stuff about Woody Allen, too, but um, maybe, maybe if they, a lot of people step up like these women is doing, I don't know. I mean, and, and this after even after this show, we don't necessarily know if he's ever going to be prosecuted. I mean, that's the end game that some of these uh, alleged victims want. That's the end game, I'm sure, but we don't know if that's really going to happen. I think that if he's going to be prosecuted, I hope that the people that are coming forward are really telling the truth. Because I had a situation with Bill Cosby. I don't know that's a whole other thing. But, like, one person speak up, then to bring, like, a lot of people out of the woodwork. Mm-hmm. But honesty is honesty. Yeah, I would hope they all telling the truth, too. Um, I don't know. From listening to, okay, from listening, if you watched the show last night and you listen to all the interviews, like his uh, security team, his um, music producers, um, people who interview him, uh, his dancers, I mean, his personal assistants, mm-hmm. it's like everybody is literally on the same page, you know? So it's kind of hard to be like, uh, hmm, I wonder, well, you know, like we've been doing for all these years, but I mean, some of these people have no reason to lie, that's like that's the it. producers and they really have no reason to lie. I mean, I don't they know. All, I don't I'm know. basically about the same. If they all basically tell the same thing, man. You know, and more than likely, truth is the truth. But sometimes people hear what somebody else saying and they jump on that wagon only because they want to, like, want to, you know, get a little publicity sometimes. Yeah, think. get a little publicity, a little, you know. Right. Name up. Clout name chasing. Name. Clout chasing. <laughs> <laughs> Can we say clouts chasing? But um what was I about to say? Oh, and then like they had talked about uh a little bit about 
R. Kelly being abused. Now, one thing that I have to say about this, his brother, Carrie, um, he said that he experienced that as well, you know, with, uh, they claim it was their sister. That's what the allegations say, that it was their sister. But my thing is, if all of these people is going to come forward about him, why won't Carrie come forward and say specifically what happened with them? Like it's been alleged that it was their sister. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to come forward telling everything that Kells have been doing, why protect somebody else? If this could have set the domino effect for um, Kells, you know, yeah. uh, it's not it's not fair. It's not uh, right what he did. And I would never say, you know, that's an excuse. You know, never. Uh, but a lot of guys and girls who get molested or raped or abused when they're younger... It's a psychological thing that they continue on when they get older, but they instead are the abuser and not the victim anymore. Right. And I think if his sister done anything wrong to him and him, R. Kelly or his brother, I believe if you like if you're gonna shame one, not really shame, but if you're gonna bring it out about one, bring it out about the other, because a lot of times when people do things, it is somewhere something that happened with them. I mean like hey designs right v sorry go ahead <laughs> i just want to say hi <laughs> it's just like no i believe i believe that's my belief that i mean usually like they say people that do certain things as small kids they grow up to be a certain type of way yep that is true that is true um <laughs> I don't know. Like, I guess the biggest uh, thing for me, like, okay, a lot of these ag accusations and allegations we've been hearing forever. But what got me was how many people knew and just turned the eye. I mean, from his brother to his bodyguards to his personal assistants, they saw mm -hmm. stuff like they would go to his studio he had bedrooms in there and they would walk in and, and in different rooms there'd be a young girl one naked in this room one barely dressed in this room they all waiting for him in different rooms like that just got me like <sighs> I, I think nobody that, nobody I stood up that's what i was just gonna say if they saw that happening when it was happening and they totally, truly knew that these are under underage girls, mm -hmm. and nobody spoke up. Like I said, it always goes back to what you can actually do to keep a person quiet. Right. And it's crazy how when they were describing Kills as a younger child, they would say, you welcome, hon. Designs by V. <laughs> we doing good. <laughs> it's been it's been an okay day today. You know, I did my little... I was working from home today. So I've been up early um, working from home. Then Sam came over. <laughs> Next time we go live, though, with a sisters from another Mr. Review, we're going to be at her crib. <laughs> yeah, she promised me snacks. Come on in. And hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> but <laughs> what'd you say? When they call them orders, they call them ace. What they call them? Orders? What? What they call them? Ace type or something? I don't know what. I don't yeah, know. People don't say it right. Hoarders? I, I don't know. I, I said, said it right, right. Orders. Okay. <laughs> anyway, but um, what what got me too was how. Um, they say how R. Kelly used to be when he was younger, when they was given a description of him, how he was so shy and timid. And even though he had a great voice at a very young age and he was musically talented with his keyboard and, you know, everything, he was so shy and stuff. He would even sing like with his face to you. You know how you pay little kids? Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know you have a have a get together and you be like, sing boy, sing for everybody, sing for your grandma. Get out there and do a two step.
yeah, show your grandma how you do that. Yeah, okay, there you go. Give you a dollar. You know, they try to give you a dollar, you know, try to get you dancing or whatever. <laughs> Embarrassing you. And you be like, oh, I'm trying to turn around. I don't, I don't really want to do it, you know. But anywho, he was like really shy. And how this person so shy and fragile and mild-mannered, how he turned into this monster that some people, you know, alleges that he is. It's, it's crazy. Something happened. Something happened, and I do believe that he was really um, abused as a child. I, I, I really do believe that. Um, and some people say how he, uh, since he was abused by a woman, that kind of triggered down to him being an abuser of women. And not liking women, liking women, but not liking women. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Mm -mm, that's crazy. That's crazy. But yeah, I mean, again, I can't take away from his talent. Um, he he's still even the last time I heard him sing. You know, he still can get up there and you know perform really well and everything. But I don't know. Um. Again, if anything is going to happen from him because of this TV show, I did hear that he had uh, told Lifetime if they wouldn't cancel the show, if they didn't cancel the show, then he was going to sue them and bring a big lawsuit against them. But you know how Lifetime is. Lifetime, one of those channels that don't care. <laughs> they don't they don't care. They gonna put their movie out there. They gonna put their um biograph biographical movies and all that kind of stuff out there on anybody they want to. So just because you are Kelly, um, and you famous and you well known and you got so many hit records, um, and songwriting credits, that <laughs> you know how much money they making off of this show. You know how much money they gonna make when they try to sell these this show on a uh, DVD and oh, yeah. okay they go they gonna make some money off this show. You said some things you can't look at at the R Kelly stuff. I feel you, designed by V. I feel you. <clears throat> I totally feel you. It's 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 like when they was playing all the oh my god I I can't I have to admit it. When they was playing his throwback videos, his throwback songs, I was up there like, hey, I believe I can fly. Okay, I mean, like, oh, all yeah. these his songs, yeah. like, it, I don't know. And then, you know, one thing they said was when, okay, when all the allegations was going on around Aaliyah time, and then after Aaliyah, rest in peace, um, after Aaliyah, uh, after Born in the 90s and, you know, uh, the R. Kelly album and public announcement, you know, after he had got really big, um, and then more and more allegations came out, they said that's when he started making songs like Step in the Name of Love and, you know, all these other songs, um, and then that one song, I Believe I Can Fly, the one he made, and it was basically like, he, you know, he really, really, really idolized you know, MJ, Michael Jordan. Oh, yeah. So he used to play basketball at MJ's house all the time, him and his brother, Carrie, and probably a few other people. And so when they asked him to uh, write a song or sing for that, you know, movie, that was the first thing he imagined was Michael Jackson, you know, soaring and flying and all that. But then they also said that was around the time where he was trying to like, bring people um like the children like he was trying to reach the children you know from oh, that yeah. song oh, oh, oh. because it was like what was the name of the doggone movie y'all help me out here i can't remember the uh <laughs> the movie oh, that he was uh, in uh with all the characters in the car no that was that was different no that was a different one i, I can't remember that name of that movie Space Jam. Yeah. Uh, exactly. uh, I, bought my kids. <laughs> I bought my kids. Yeah, they had all the Space Jam stuff. <laughs> they had all the Space Jam stuff. So, yeah, it, it was like 
certain times when the allegations got larger and larger, they said he would like, when he saw him, I believe I can fly. That kind of brought people back to him too. You know, um, it's like he always knew what to do to get an effect out of people through his music. What's the one? I, I like the, I Yeah, like it's that, that basketball movie. movie. Yep, that basketball movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, all the kids, <laughs> all the kids love Space Jam. I did too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I did too. But um, what did he say about he was being, uh, I think it was in his book. He has said, as a kid, he had lots of secrets. Some were terrible. Um, some were beautiful. Some were both. Um, one secret is about what had happened to him at home that he really didn't let out on. And I think, I don't know, I think him coming forward and not like we want to get all up in his business, but him, sometimes you you can't get over things if you can't go through them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. As far as that, like, I don't know. But I think if he went that far about saying stuff, he should have, he'd give a little bit more because people did that open up doors for people to kind of assume things about him. Maybe everything, not saying everything was his fault, but after And he might age, feel that way. Yeah. A lot of kids, when they're little, they do feel that way. They feel like it's their fault. They feel like, um, you know, it's their fault when stuff happens to them as a young child. And then it's like, even if he did specifically tell us what happened to him mm-hmm. as a child, him and his brother Carrie, um, it's, it's really like too late for charges to be pressed. I mean, they have like a statue of a limitation. Mm-hmm. So even if they did tell, uh, hello? Did I hang the phone up? I hope I didn't hang the phone up. Hello? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so I thought I heard somebody on the line. Hold on, let me put you on the speaker, okay? Okay. Hello. Are you there? Who who we got on the line? You have the line from New York. Oh, hi. Hello. How are you? Hi. I'm good, I'm good. That's good. I, just, um, I wanted to call in because I've been following the R. Kelly thing for a while now. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I've watched documentaries, the BBC, I've listened to the interviews. And um, and then just like after watching the um, episodes air last night, I went on to like YouTube just to kind of check out what some of the reactions were. And I saw that a lot of the men who you were hosting some of these conversations, they were saying that, they were blaming the women, the young ch- the children. You know, it was about the, these girls. They knew what they were getting themselves into. They wanted it. They liked it. And it was just so disgusting to me because I feel like the purpose of this documentary is not to blame these children to right. expose R. Kelly for the things that he has done. You know, he's a, pe- he's a pedophile. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously as a man and having money, having fame, having influence, you know, he's able to manipulate. And he's not manipulating any woman, you know, because they did talk about, like, even his people, they would say, like, if there was strong women, he couldn't control them. He went after certain types of women. Mm-hmm. And he was able to, you know, um, lure the men and then obviously control these women. And so it just really hurts me to hear, you know, um, black men, and men in general, and then not only just men, some of these were women also calling in and commenting that they do be- they do believe that these women wanted it, that they enjoyed the sex with him. And I was like, what the hell? That is you so know, wrong. And it, and it, <laughs> that yeah, is so wrong. I just, I just was like, what the hell? And now, 
I think it, this, the situation with R. Kelly, it, it highlights so many issues because, you know, I do understand some of the concern that people say, well, what about the families? The families had known about previous instances where R. Kelly and young children, it had been out there publicly. Mm-hmm. You know, there was situations with, with Aaliyah, and then the tape with the 13 or 15-year-old well, girl. Spark, that I mean, was out there. Now, that but, part, I was like, I think Sparkle, I, think, I don't know, I kind of take her to be partly responsible for that, as in you guys were around him all this time. Did you guys listen to Sparkle's interview on, um, she did an interview with Ricky Smiley, because she said uh-huh. that uh, when she went, when she did her tape, she did a five-hour taping uh-huh. without breaks on Lifetime. She said that not everything got aired, but she said uh-huh. that she actually was with her, her with her all the time, for the most part. She said, but then their contract ended, so she stopped their relationship, she stopped coming up there, mm-hmm. and she assumed that the family also ended their relationship, but, but they, they continued <laughs> to <laughs> work with him. Mm-hmm. So, she said she was getting calls about something wasn't right, so she went up there, mm-hmm. you know, and she saw it. She said she contacted the police prior to the tape being found. So, she, she said, like, she wanted her family to get on. She was hoping that Introducing her needs, the family, they could all sort of make some money out of the right. situation. So I do, I do think a lot of it was money. Mm-hmm. I do too. Yeah. I think a lot of it was money. And I have heard also um, on some of these YouTube videos out here how a lot of them were claiming, like you said, uh, a lot of these women wanted it. And uh, have you? did you hear about that book by the, it's called uh, Daddy's. Was it Daddy's girl? Oh, that no, I, one, I, one of the girls that he was with had uh, wrote this book. Let me look it up real quick. But anyway, she wrote this book. You know Kaya, right? Yeah, Kaya. Kaya yeah. Okay, Kaya. Mm-hmm. She did a live uh, probably about four days ago. And she was reading from the book. And she was reading on her iPad or something like that. And I'm going to have to look the book up real quick. It's called Daddy's Girl. And the girl was explaining how she had been a fan of R. Kelly since she was like, like in kindergarten. And how she had, as she grew up, you know, she was, she became a bigger fan of his um, when he was going through trial and all that kind of stuff. And she was like, she always believed he was innocent and she always loved him and adored him and had a crush on him. And when she got older as a teenager, she actually and her cousin got tickets to his concert and went to his concert and she lied about her age to meet him. And that's how they started a relationship. And she even said that she didn't want to call herself a victim because she did everything possible to get him to have sex with him, to be with him. And I'm going to get that book. I'm going to find out the name of the book. But still, still, when you like 12, 13, because she met him at the age of 15. And she alleges that he told her once she broke down and told her her real age, she started crying because she thought he wouldn't want to be with her no more. And he was like, I already knew. There is nothing you can oh keep God. from daddy. She said, "There is." he said, there is nothing you can keep from daddy. And he was like, you just have to start acting like you're older than you really are. And she was like, how can I do now? Kaya was reading all this from the book. And she was like, how am I supposed to act older than I? Because she's like 15. And he said, you have to start doing this. You have to walk like this. You have to talk like this. No more being on the social medias all the time. It's all about me. I'm your daddy. And all your attention needs to be on me. And oh, my God, I got to get that book. You know, my my thing with that, I haven't read the book, but I feel like, you know, there's a lot with that. Because it's one, you have a culture that sexualizes and really endorses young, older men and young mm-hmm. women together, right? Always. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I'm like, that, that's, again, the type of woman. Like, he, he he's attracting certain type of women. Because I would never fly across nowhere. Because I don't care. I love you some. I, I, when I was growing up, before the whole scandal with us, I used to love me some us. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I would go crazy. But I'm not about to fly. I'm not about to be irrational 
in those right. kind of ways. And I think he's dealing with people who, you know, they need, they want someone that will, that will, you know, take care of them, that will be there for them. Emotionally, something's not right with, I don't know, they just have issues. And he knows it, and then he takes them and he controls them. And I feel sorry for these ladies, and I hope that that they will be recovered, that they will have some sort of um, resolve. But I, I just too. hate that they get bashed. They're getting bashed. And, and that's wrong. Um, that's always wrong, too. I mean, when it's... Oh, Lord. Even with these grown women that he... Um, I guess now, you know, for a long time since the allegations been out, he started to still get them young... But old enough, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So people will be staring at him sideways, but he still get them like right out of high school, right? You yeah. know, stuff like that. He tried to get them at 17 mm -hmm. because then it's only, he can just have, he can communicate with them, yep. you know, have some like friendship with them. Yep. But then when they turn 18, then it's like, you know, now you're legal. So nobody mm -hmm. can't say anything to me. Now they can't say so like it's them. perfect that way and then he has a year to train them you know it, it's classic just like someone said it before like it's um i don't want to say pimp culture but like that's what they do that's what pimps do you know it's, they groom them. it's a lot of too they yeah groom them. they groom them they train them on how to behave and then they become um socialized in that way that's all they know that's what they want mm -hmm. and they don't really understand that it's that it's completely wrong, you know? Um, and maybe they do. I don't know the whole situation, but I do know that there were a lot of people around. And it's so it's hard for me to watch this documentary because I'm, I'm cringing hearing all these men and other people who were around mm -hmm. who knew that things weren't right. And because they were so hooked into the money, like that money chain must have been long because they did not yeah. want to give it up. Like they just kept overlooking it. I'm like, how do you walk into a studio and know this butt naked woman? And you don't know this. Like, and you know exactly. this is not the something where you're not collecting, you're not um, checking IDs. Right. You know, and that and man kept saying he never checked the IDs, never. Right. And then the guy who was supposed to be protecting Aaliyah was there for her marriage. Man, how can you? I just. I can't, I can't understand it. I can't understand it. They lied with it. the birth certificate. I, they did falsified it. Right. I mean, everything to get but, him. Because they thought she was pregnant, right? I think that was... Well, there, yeah. They thought she was pregnant. But from what I understand, there's, been some, there's, a, there's a couple stories. They, they thought she was pregnant because she didn't have her period. Uh -huh. But now it seems that, that she contracted an STD from him, which made her miss her period. She uh, ended up not being pregnant, uh, but that was the thought that she was pregnant. And so they um, hurried so up and had a rush wedding to make it yeah. seem legal that he was having sex with her. Well, to protect him in case, because he knew the family, her family would probably come after him. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to have legal protection, but that marriage could never hold up. Right. You know? Yeah, it could never hold so up that, because she lied about her age. But what do you think about what her mother said? Did you see what her mother said? Yeah. Um, if you uh, look over the years, please. yeah. Um, Diane, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think if you look over the years, she There's is the book very right there. about what she stands. She's always been like, you cannot talk about Aaliyah. Don't put Aaliyah into any, because she wants to protect Aaliyah's legacy. So I totally get where she's coming from. She doesn't want her daughter's name to be put into this, because now people are going to be like, damn, Aaliyah was fucking at 15. She was fucking not killing. Mm -hmm. you know, she, she just wants a really good image. And I, and I get it. Her daughter died a tragic death. So I know she's going to come out, but I don't believe. I, I don't think. I think she just had to say that. Right. But I, I do believe that these girls, they, that the girl who said that she sort of them having sex, I believe that happened. Mm -hmm. And I also believe that she, you know, she was pregnant too. Or she maybe had, she was maybe, was, um, she had this situation because, you know, she went and got married to him. And so the mom, clearly her statement is not accurate because, she wasn't there for the marriage, or was she? You know, it's like, no. now it's a lot of questions. They wasn't um, there. They went back to Leah's house afterwards, and that's when they blew, they blew up on, on Aaliyah and R. Kelly mm -hmm. when they came to uh, basically let them know, you know, look, we married, and this, this, and that. And to go back a little bit, though, oh, um, you see what Miss Hogg said in the comments? I'm sorry. R. Kelly is a sick man, and the people around that witnessed it all, yep. That's what, and that's what I'm saying. And the money thing, that's why I said a lot of people saw R. Kelly had money. They didn't care that R. Kelly had these young girls, people that's going to be hurt. 
and go, you know, need counseling or help later on down the road in life. Once, you know, just like they make a new car in a, in a, every year, they produce younger and younger women. And if young woman is his thing, whoever there with R. Kelly, I figure if I don't help or uphold him in this part, eventually he'll mm-hmm. let me go and get somebody else that will. Mm-hmm. So that's why. But you I, know, it's just like that Harvey Weinstein thing because like, a lot of people know what was going on. Yep, they yep. just kind of act like they didn't know. And I remember they did an interview back in years ago and they had a couple of like, rappers because I think it was after his like, case, after the case happened, which he was acquitted from. People were like, they were interviewing some of the rappers he was sending out with them and did like songs with them. And they were like, yeah, they knew some stuff, but like they would never allow their daughters around them because they know. If, 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 because they knew. Music, I would never. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, these people, a lot of people do. They close their eyes unless it was somebody that affected them. Huh? They close yeah, their yeah, eyes to it. Yeah. But kept their daughters exactly. safe. Yeah. 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 And they knew they knew. Yeah. Yeah. And they knew they knew. 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 Yeah. And they knew like really tell what happened because I feel like these other women Girl, have been very it. honest about shit mm-hmm. and she, she, she she's acting like she didn't know about the other woman and she's know, lying um, she's lying and I feel like well she never even addressed that's the thing she's been on several shows trying to promote this documentary and also coming out after the other woman came out and if you listen you could go on she went on to she went on to The View. She went on to she went on to about three or four shows, right? Yep. Before this documentary came out. You listen to the interviews, they all sound the same exact the same. Like they were scripted. Like the same exact stuff, word for word, mm-hmm. the same story. Mm-hmm. Which is I feel like someone sat down with her, they wanted her to come out a certain way. They wanted her to only talk about certain things. And to me it doesn't come off genuine because you too too you too to the point. You too to the key. And I feel like you know more. Like she didn't like want to implicate herself. Sex. Yeah, I feel like she had sex probably with underage girls, as like so, as like the other girls did. I do believe she engaged. Finally, in, somebody she, said it. <laughs> I, I believe she had three friends. Mm-hmm. I believe she had sex with underage girls. I do believe that. I do and believe. I don't feel like she wants that out there. But I'm like, you can't do this. If you're going to come out, come out all the way. Spill all the tea. It, it, it's past the point of because I'm like, it's not your, like you don't want, you, you're, not, you're not the blame for this. You know what I mean? Like, he is the, the sick person here, but you've got to come all the way. And mm-hmm. she doesn't seem like she's telling the full truth. And that's mm-hmm. what I'm having a problem with. Her story doesn't seem all the way with me. Yeah, and I totally mm-hmm. agree. I'm glad somebody said that. I was going to speak about that, too. Um, how I think that she was involved with young girls. Because, like, I've seen and heard from the interviews from people that what he does is, which is like a lot of pedophiles, they find them a victim, they groom them, they nurture them, they spoil them, wine them, and dine them, and they abuse them sexually, emotionally, physically, all that. And then once they get to a certain age, then they start finding somebody younger than them, and they will send out the women to look for younger victims to bring back to them. I believe there are probably hundreds. Yeah. Hundreds. I I truly believe there are probably hundreds of victims that haven't came forward yet. If not more. If not more. The girl had said that uh, there was a girl who did an interview. I forget where she did it. But she said that she had to sign an NDA. And so he he does make them sign an NDA. But she broke her NDA. Yeah. And so, and he pays them. He was paying these women. But see, I think this is all about the fall over because 
he and a lot of the stuff is statutory limitations have run out. Mm-hmm. So right. it's like these what's gonna happen is that these girls have been paid off for a, a long time. He's running out of money and by the time they share their story, I mean his his obviously his reputation is gonna go down the mud. Right. I do think he's gonna lose money. I think he's gonna be affected economically, mm-hmm. but in terms of justice I think he's. I think he's going to be insulated from it because he was able to strategically pay these people, and right. the money's drying up, but the statute of limitations are also drying up. So you know, it's like he's lost his freedom, yeah. and that's the sad part about it all. Yeah. So, it's, it's but yeah, I just wanted to call in because I just was, like I said, I was irritated about what I was hearing. Like I don't want them to blame these women. You know, it's that's why we keep getting ourselves in these situations because the women keep getting blamed and then that's why they don't, they don't talk that's about it they don't hear it, yep. and no one wants to protect them because they always get blamed and it's black women in this situation that has, has went through this abuse and no one is coming up for them and I think it's about time that we stand up for our black women and we stop trying to attack them for their sexuality attack them for their insecurities we need to protect them that's it so that's it. I agree. All right. <laughs> I agree. And I thank you for your call. You hit on so many issues that I agree with. I really appreciate your call. <laughs> and thank you for letting me vent. I had to let it out. No problem. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Talk to you soon. Thank you. <laughs> yep. I totally agree with a lot. You know what she was saying. <laughs> It's New York, and I showed y'all a picture of that book. Uh, let me go back to it. Uh, uh, okay, hold on. Let me find it. Let me find it. Okay, here it is. It's called uh, "Forever Daddy's Girl." There it is, right there. Um, I think that's Walmart. A Walmart website that is on. Forever Daddy's oh, yeah. Girl, Naive. I don't even know how to say her name. You think that's Naive? Neve? Neve. Yeah. I just heard Kaya reading the book. Um, it was like four or five days ago, I want to say. Um, it was so good and juicy. I actually wanted to stay up and watch Kaya's whole video, but I fell asleep. <laughs> um, but it was like an hour and a half. She had... Um, on her show, on Kaya's uh, YouTube channel, and she was reading, you know, the book, and it was crazy how this little girl, um, they was like, you've been liking R. Kelly since she was like five, I understand liking his music, but at five, what was you doing? What was you what? Five? <laughs> the songs that he was singing. I was getting to like, God, I was like, thank you. When I was like 18, 19, I'm like, the songs he saw made me blush as a grown woman. So I, I don't know. I don't know. But y'all, I'm going to get that book. I swear I is. I'm going to get that book because she was letting out all tea. She met him at, allegedly, met him at 15. He didn't care. Um, he told her, I already know. There's nothing There's nothing you could, you could do that daddy doesn't already know. Don't that sound like something you said to your kid? Yeah, you know? Like, <laughs> I don't know. I would have been like, if she would have came home as my daughter and told me anybody said anything like that to her. Mm-hmm. I don't care how much of a fan or how long you've been fond of this person. And what is he going to do for you or whatever, your career or whatever it was? Mm-hmm. I, I, we would need to sit down and talk, me and him, for one. Exactly. Daddy is not going to fly away. Uh, let me read some of the comments. Uh, let's see. His songs aren't. Thank you, Miss Booker. His songs ain't, I'm telling y'all, y'all, go to Kaya's page, I mean, to her YouTube channel. Um, I can't remember the exact name of the live, but I, I, I think it had, I'm pretty sure it had R. Kelly in there. I'm pretty sure. And she was, that, that girl who wrote that book was telling a lot of tea, a lot of tea. But um, one thing that uh, a lot of the women say is after he got them right where he wants them, that's when he would start abusing them and treating them like property 
and he would like keep them locked up. They couldn't speak to people. I mean, and I think that was mainly because he didn't want nobody to find out all these younger women were too young. That's the main thing I think he hit is the age. One of the main things I think he hit him is because of the age, the things that he were he was doing. Mm-hmm. And yep. I feel that coming off of listening to a lot of it is like people prey on like when you don't have certain things and it's not your everyday needs. A lot of people wanna look at material things. Mm-hmm. So he probably figured if he can Get him that way, and once he got him, he knew when he had him. Mm-hmm. So that's what, like you said, he stepped in. They said with the abuse, and you don't talk to this person or that person or whatever to keep it hushed on actually what he was doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. More like that trafficking, like how I, it come up to me, like kind of like trafficking, traf- but not trafficking, I guess. And and uh, and trafficking is real. <laughs> Trafficking is so real. We live in Omaha, Nebraska, and we even had raids over like the past, I don't know, I, I want to say maybe five years, um, arrested a group of traffickers, Omaha, Nebraska, in the yes. Midwest. Like trafficking is so real. And it, it kind of <laughs> reminds me of that too, because he had people to recruit yeah. these women. And some of them came from out of state. And even his, you know, his brothers and them were saying on the show that they would they would uh fly girls in and out all the time. In and out the state all the time. And that to me is trafficking. Like you're going to over me, the borders yeah. to get some young thing. And I believe as long as those women or girls, young girls was getting what they wanted. Nobody was gonna say anything, you know. Yep. Or that's what his hope was. So hold on, I think we uh. Hello. Oh, okay, I was making sure it wasn't nobody on the phone. Um, it, it's crazy that a lot of people, like they were saying, even um. Some of the people on the show, uh, it, it's just appalling how many people knew. Like, okay, let me show y'all the statement from her mom. Uh, from a, this is from Aaliyah's mom. Now, Aaliyah's mom, she made a statement the other day because that that uh, segment of the TV show that was on last night when they were discussing. What happened with Aaliyah? How they found out that she was, you know, having uh, sex with R. Kelly. Um, it, Javante was the person that they were interviewing. Javante Cunningham, which was one of his backup singers who met him um, in 1990 when she was 14. Her and her cousin, Tia Hawkins, uh, were both age 14. And... Um, her cousin's actual name is Tiffany Tia Hawkins, but her and her cousin met him when they were both 14. Um, you know, they were his backup dancers and singers for him and they did vocals for him for the born in the nineties album. Um, she, they talked to her a lot and she was like the one that brought up Aaliyah and you could tell like this was so emotional for her because you know Aaliyah is still still missed like by so many people. Not just her family and friends, but she's dearly missed yeah, by a lot of us. I mean, I can't mm-hmm. think of her without feeling some type of way all the time. It is like not only because she passed and because she was a great dancer and singer and uh, actress, but then you have to add in the fact that she was taken advantage of at a young age. And for these people to go online talking about these women wanted it, they knew what they was doing. These is girls. After a certain age, 
I mean, you you're an adult, but even though you're an adult, you become accustomed to certain things in mm -hmm. a, a lifestyle, mm -hmm. and uh, they may have known. I will say, but the younger ones versus like a 15 year old to a 25 year old woman still is it's a space in there where I think that the older you get, the more you would know. But like a 15 year old child, mm -hmm. they see the glitter and the glam, the shoes, the clothes, the car, and a 25 year old woman could see that too. But him being the way he was. And the way he started talking to him, and maybe the relationship with the, like the ages and everything played a part in it. But maybe the relationship with the dad, grandpa, or somebody. So then he's saying, "Daddy, this and daddy that," and probably tell tell me, "Daddy, about your problem." And sometimes they say, "You look for love in all the wrong places." Right. And that's what he was probably most likely giving these women of whatever ages. Mm -hmm. And regardless, you know, I think that he did wrong, but also somebody on the the women go have to stand up too for what what they knew about him. Right. Some of them didn't. Some of them probably went in blind, but some of them went in knowing these things because people talk, mm -hmm. and they do. Yeah, well, one thing I like, one thing I wanted to mention <laughs> was the clinical psychologist that, uh, the clinical psychologist that was on the show last night, he made a point by saying, for all these people out there who's talking about the girls, knew what they was doing, you know, like they wanted it, blah, 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 um, the clinical psychologist's name was Jody Edwell or Edwell. Um, and he said what it is, the women had what you call a learned helplessness, you know, feeling like there was nothing they could do to change the situation. Um, he said Kells was very skillful and making women do whatever he wanted, like call him daddy. You can only wear this around me. You can't wear that. You can't move around the house without permission. You can't go to the bathroom without permission. You can't call your family. I mean, it, it was, but he said it was gradual. It wasn't like right away. Like when you grooming your victims, he spoiled them, wind them, dined them, treated them like they was the only thing in the world to him. And then he gradually, um, you know, step by step, basically made it where it was hard for them to get out. Mm -hmm. And he said they stayed because, you know, the cycle of abuse. It starts with the honeymoon phase. You know, where they take care of you. Everything's great. Lots of love. And then you go from that to walking around on eggshells. So I like what um, Jody Adwell had to say um, last night. You know, the clin clinical psychologist. And you agree with that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I was trying to word it in like that. Mm -hmm. But that is true. That's what anything, not anything, but a lot of way they like when like they say, treat me how you treat me when you like in a relationship. If you try to get a relationship with a man, or you try to get a relationship with you as a woman, they say treat and do the things you did to get them to keep them. Mm -hmm. But he he probably was still doing that kind of stuff, but. The abuse side that he, the, the his abusive side, what he wasn't going to make him off. As, he didn't want to run them off as the, as women or young girls or whatever. So he was being nice to them. Mm -hmm. And once he got where he, you know, when you got somebody right where he wanted them, but it depended on him. And they say he exactly. always took like he always picked like women or young girls who were like in the poverty areas. What, yeah. Who didn't have a lot of money, may have only came from a single parent home. Um, girls who were just like, you know, just love that success from him and everything that he had to offer. I mean, from the jewelry, the, the nice cars, flying them back and forth, the clothes, 
it, he was able to give them things that they probably thought they would never have. And once you get the taste of a certain thing, if you like it, you're going to do the most to keep it. Just like they say, a lot of people that don't want to go out and earn a living for themselves. Somebody come and start handing and giving you things and you already be like, I don't want to go to work. I don't want to do this. I don't want that. This person tell you you don't have to do anything like that. And they start, you know, they start off giving and giving and giving. Mm -hmm. And then when it's time for, you know, when, it, when they feel, oh, this person is hooked. And I, hate, I don't wanna really want to use, like, drugs or anything. But even alcohol or anything, they give you a little bit, then they give you more. Then they, give you, was then they start him. making, yeah, that's it. Like, yeah. he was a drug. That's thank you. He was their drug. That's mm -hmm. it. All I don't want to say yeah. is that, yep. And you know, when they was talking to the one lady, uh, Lizette, uh, Lizette, when they was talking to her, now Lizette was the one that had met him um, in Miami, I believe it was. And, you know, he married Andrea, but he was still with Lizette, she claims, when he met, she, okay, he was with Lizette for some time. Mm -hmm. And she was one of the ones that she had hooked up with him. Everything was cool. Everything was gravy um, when they first met. But then she found out he was married. She found out he got married. And it was through one of her friends. She's at home waiting for him because, as I said before, um, they alleged that he don't let them go anywhere. They can't talk to anybody. You know, he, he keeps them isolated. And Lizette, you know, she was an aspiring singer, um, 17 years old. And, you know, she ran into him one day at the mall. And it was her and her friends, and they ran into him at the mall. And she was like, you know what, that's Kells, that's Kells. And her friend was like, no, why would he be here at the mall? But they say he was always at the mall. He was always at the high school's. The junior highs. He was always at the McDonald's uh, yeah. where the kids hung out, you know, in Hyde Park where the kids hung out, you know, a lot of the times. <laughs> I mean, who hangs out at the McDonald's? Junior high school kids, high school kids, yes. not Man. no college kids, not around no high school. They was, and then like one of the producers, he had said on there, one day he had heard. Or he had been hearing that he was always hanging around at the high schools and, you know, the junior highs. Mm -hmm. And he was, like, always wondering, why would he be there? And he said one time he saw him actually traveling there, like, going in that direction. And he, the, I mean, so many people turned a blind eye, but that girl, Lizette, she was actually with him for a time. And then, again, everything was perfectly fine. But afterwards, she met up with him. Um, he started kissing her like the first time that she met him. You know, they had went to a studio, uh, you know, at his house. And that was when um, he was working with Boys to Men. And one of the songs came on and he wanted to her to sing to it to show some of her vocal skills. Mm -hmm. uh, this girl was really talented. Like most of the ones he select, right. they be talented. Um, she said while she was singing, he leaned over and kissed her, and she didn't know what to do. She kind of like froze up. She didn't know what to do, and she was like, "I couldn't believe for one that I met him at the mall. I couldn't believe for two that I was at his house. I couldn't believe three that he wanted to listen to me sing." But she said after they was kissing, she knew, she knew. Her career was going nowhere, and she knew what time it was. Right, that's what she said on the show. She said she knew what time it was, and she was with him, you know, again when he had met his wife Andrea. Uh, she was at home and had heard about his wedding over the by her uh friend, <laughs> like, hey, home girl, your boyfriend just got married. <laughs> You know, to his, uh, to one of his choreographers, <laughs> while you at home trapped in the closet, your your husband just got married to one of his dancers, and she couldn't do nothing about it. She couldn't do nothing about it, and she stayed there. And they asked her, you know, what was the last straw? 
I mean, he kept treating her, disrespecting her. Um, they was like, what was the last straw? Uh, after being humiliated for a long time, um, she would be humiliated and abused if she talked back to him, um, if she ate something without asking first, uh, if she walked around the house freely without asking to leave the bedroom. Um, she said one time he humiliated her so, so, so bad he had her doing sexual acts in the back of his car while his friends were in the front. Can you imagine? I think if whatever come out of this, he need to pay for a lot of what he does. He didn't tore up some women. Lives. He didn't destroy a lot of lives. He yeah. He, 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 it, wrong, right is right and wrong is wrong. And I mean, like I always say, he's a very talented singer. I do like me some. But that's what anybody wanted to do wrong. They were no match, Miss Booker. You're right. They, those kids mentally were no match for him. Um, he knew how to pick him. He he knew how to pick him. He definitely knew how to pick them um them little girls. And it's so sad. They asked her what was the last straw after all being humiliated and all that kind of stuff. She said she had got pregnant and she had a, a miscarriage. And when she found out that she had a miscarriage. Um, that was around the time that he started working with, uh, Michael, uh, Jackson. He had worked with, you know, Michael Jackson's sister and, um, Janet and Michael really liked, you know, the work that he did for Janet. So he hit him up to help him and he helped him with that song. You are not alone. She claimed that that song was secretly dedicated to her mm -hmm. because he wasn't with her when she had her miscarriage. Um, but yeah, that was a time that was around the time when he did that remix with Janet. Um, I can't remember the name of the song that he did a remix with her. I, 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 I can't remember. Janet before. Wow, but I said some of the songs and stuff I didn't like keep up with like yeah, Lord have mercy. Stuff. Oh uh, yes, <laughs> she said, "Lord have mercy <laughs> on all of them." Like for real, like all of them. Lord have mercy on him if he ever gets convicted. But like, I don't. That's why. I, I mean, because of statute of lim, uh, statute of limitations, mm -hmm. can anything ever be done? I mean, but but Lizette, back to Lizette. She said the final straw was when she called mono, mono nucleosis from him. Um, which eventually turned to, I think it's called Giambre, where her whole body from the mono, um, her whole body went paralyzed. She almost died, like almost died. And he sent her family a thousand dollar check. That showed her her work with him right there. Is that all you worth? <laughs> yeah, obviously. And he probably figured if she don't come through, what she she not gonna be worth too much to him. And if she did come through, she wasn't gonna be worth too much because she probably gonna wanna go after him for more money. So he figured, you know, let me try to get rid of her right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think with That's R. Crazy. Kelly, he might have had issues or whatever that and mistreated sexually or whatever but I think that him being the person that he was and being in the eye of a million, millions of people and people really liking him I think R. Kelly could have reached out some type of way and got help Once he if, found he out really, that, if, he, if he really wanted the help but I think when after Aaliyah after Aaliyah after the whole entire world Found out that he was having sex with Aaliyah. Found out that he married her at the age of 15. Matter of fact, here's the marriage certificate. You see on there, now it's kind of blurry. Mm -hmm. um, but you see on there, the groom's name is Robert S. Kelly, mm -hmm. age 27. The bride's name is Aaliyah Houghton, age 18. Mm -hmm. 
Date of marriage, August 11th. Is that August 11th? Mm -hmm. 1994, Cook County, um, Illinois. Oh. And she was, she put on there, she was 18. Now, on the show, his security and everybody, you know, the people who were there, you know, to witness, witness their marriage, which was, by the way, in a hotel room. They didn't even go to the courthouse. This was like truly secret wedding um, ceremony. They had it in the hotel room. And they forged the documents. She was really 15. They forged the documents, said she was 18. They got married. I mean, of course, we know it was later annulled. But, I mean, after that, him marrying somebody 15 when everybody found out how old she really was, found out he was having a sexual relationship with a 15 year old girl. Um, and he met her when Aaliyah was like 12. Yeah. Like 12 years old. Um, when people found out that they had sex or they were having sex, like mm -hmm. when the, um, when they interviewed that one lady, Javante, she said um, they were all on the tour bus and it was close quarters. Everybody just had a little piece of a curtain, you know, to cover their little bunk bed for like when they wanted to go to sleep or whatnot. Um, and they always played pranks on people, you know, just having fun, playing pranks, joking around, being silly. Mm -hmm. And they said one night they did a prank. And somebody opened up Kale's uh, door or curtain or they kind of made it seem like his bedroom on the tour bus was a little bit more lavish than, you know, their little sleeping quarters. And they opened up his door and everybody saw him and Aaliyah from what they say, doing things to a child that a grown person should never do to a child. And Javante said in respect of Aaliyah because they loved her and respected her and admired her so much. And they were real close friends, by the way. Um, she refused to say exactly what sexual acts they were having. Mm -hmm. But just let it be known that they were having intercourse. Some type of sexual intercourse. So much as I Kelly and Aaliyah, you know. Yep. Just them two. That was on the tour bus. Mm -hmm. That's when everybody first found out. That they were because people had it had been like allegations and rumors. I mean, even on interviews, even on BET, I mean, people were always asking, Are you two more than <laughs> is this image closer than it appears? You know, is this image closer than it appears? And they would always deny it. And that one interview when they was on, was it BET? Um, where they was wearing matching outfits with a little Mickey Mouse sign on the head. I'm like, why this grown man? Okay, he almost 30 years old and he wearing matching outfits with a teenager. Mickey Mouse. You know, I never, I never, I never <laughs> paid much attention to it back then. But now when they show all the clips. You know, from the past, I'm like, he was wearing a Mickey Mouse matching outfit <laughs> with a teenager. Like, who does that? But, you know, they, they kept denying it. You know, we're not in a relationship. And the whole time, they were. But, of course, just like the other young girl who wrote that book that I'm going to buy, um, Forever Daddy's Girl, she said when she told him how old she would, really was, when she said, I'm 15, um, he said, I already know. And he started telling her, showing her how to act, how to make herself seem older to the outside world mm -hmm. so people wouldn't suspect anything. And I'm pretty sure, did you see how Leah went from like, mm -hmm. remember when she was on the talent show, she had that little church girl dress <laughs> on, looking all innocent and timid and up. shy and bashful. I mean, the girl with the big voice, Um, she went from that to, and Javante told him that, you know, it, R. Kelly made them 
make Aaliyah look a lot older. She went from wearing church dresses and from the talent show because she was always a tomboy. Mm -hmm. But she wore a church dress to the talent show, so everybody thought she was just, you know, just little, cute little, sweet little girl. Um, but she was a tomboy. And they said she wore real baggy clothes, you know, just, mm -hmm. just really not appealing, you know, not showing off her figure, you know, stuff like that. And they started changing her slowly to wearing the half shirts with the belt yeah, showing, know, you know, making her look older. <laughs> I don't know. What's oh. your thoughts on that? I think he robbed her of her childhood. Too. He did. He did. Amen. He robbed the live her childhood. He ain't no. And I think, you know, he probably it went through his mind and he he just knew that he he knows he knows it's wrong. And I feel that with R. Kelly, my thing is he need to still get some help because if he if he exposed, he exposed, but Say he don't get no jail time and he still has to run around. And his money, his resources don't dry up. Mm -hmm. You know, that still open up the door for him to still be able to do things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I would never, ever blame the victim. I have been in situations. I know a lot of friends, cousins, uh, associates, that have been in situations uh, where you were too young to have a voice. Um, so I know what that feels like. And especially for somebody not to believe you. Right, when you do come forward. Right. right. He, 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 once he got a hold of the women or young girls, he knew that they probably, he knew, he sat down like everybody said, the way everybody, but what, part, of, part of the groom process was, well, when you had issues, or he would probably ask about unrelated things, but like problems in life, who would you go to? And sometimes people were like, I have no support, I have nobody to talk to, and then he starts, oh, so this person needs somebody to listen to. That was one of the ways that he probably pulled that person in too. And then a lot of times when people meet a celebrity, and it ain't as common as it is nowadays to meet a celebrity like it was then. So they would be like, oh, well, my cousin and my niece or somebody, they want to bring them around. And by him not actually have to come out and say he recruiting others. But that was another way, too. Mm -hmm. And then this happened to me and my cousin together or whatever. Oh, then he'll bring, you know, bring that person and they could talk about it. That's probably how he kept his line of, you know, things flowing. Yep, yep, and um, one person I want to bring up from the uh, TV show, uh, her name was Lisa Van Allen. Um, she claims that she had met him, and they had exchanged numbers, but she waited like a month to call him, and when she told her mom who it was that she was going to see when they were finally about to hook up and everything... She said she told her mom a lot of the women and the young girls who would go see him because of all the allegations that were already out there, they knew how their family and friends would feel about if they knew, you know, they were hooking up with him. But she said she told her mom, you know, she he and her mom talked about everything. Um, she went to visit him, came back home, and she went to visit him again, and that's when she started living with him. So she never went back home after mm -hmm. that. Um, and she said that basically she thought that she was his real, real deal, like for real girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Like she really thought they was in a relationship. Uh, but she said, you know, she didn't have much, much um, interactions with other people. Her mom would call and she said he would have people like, get the phone and take her to phone. But after they cleared it with him, they would first tell him who's on the phone. They want to speak to her. 
uh, he would say if it was okay or not. She said a lot of times her mom would be so pissed and upset because she wouldn't get the phone calls from her family members, you know, just to show how isolated, you know, he kept, <coughs> he kept them. And she said there were times when his friends would come to the studio and spoke to everyone. And when she would speak to them, he, she, you know, she would piss him off. He would get pissed off. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was really horrifying because of the way that he treated them and punished them and kept them isolated. Uh, it, 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 it's just sad. But then she said she recalled how huh, he would have like young girls in the studio and he would make it seem to the parents of the young girls that he was really taking care of them um, so they could trust him. Mm -hmm. But they would turn around and have three songs with the young girls. That's disgusting. Mm -hmm. That's disgusting. Mm -hmm. And she said one time they was having a threesome and she said she found out later after the fact that the girl was only 14 years old. Um, and then she said about two years later, um, they were on one of his video shoots and another girl was there that he had had a relationship with, but you know, if they weren't actually doing anything together, like all together, like in the same bed or a sexual activity, they weren't to communicate with each other. And that brings me back to when the producer said at his studio, he had all these different rooms and had these different young girls, some of them naked, some of them half naked, you know, in different mm -hmm. rooms because he kept them all separate. But she said once she found out how young these girls were that, you know, she was having sex with, you know, she felt sick, she felt disgusted, and that was like a wrap for her. Again, Nobody said anything. You having sex with little girls in a threesome as young as 14, even if you knew after the fact, nobody said anything. It, it was like the trend. Like nobody, nobody said anything because of this man, because of who he was. Exactly. And he had them all on payroll and they figured if they said anything, I know some people saw it and they, it was in their heart, but financially, that probably was the way they provided for their family. And going back Bingo. to what they said, people would, would make music with him, do videos, come to his house, do everything. But they all said the same thing. I would never bring my daughter, my niece, or nobody around this man. They didn't trust him. But they, I, I understand that, and I feel that part. But one thing I say is, and this is this is it. R. Kelly needs some help, and the people that stood there and said, "I won't bring my own family, female wise, around this man," but watch other people, young daughters, niece, mm -hmm. sisters, get treated the way that they did. Because once people start talking about some if the statute of limitations haven't ran out. A lot of you better be careful because they'll say, well, such and such was there. And nowadays, it's a whole new law on a lot of things. And who's to say that he's not still messing around with young girls? You know, who's to say? Just like in the Bill Cosby um, situation, a lot of the, you know, situa situations were too far past. Um, but he actually got charged for one that was still within the laws of, you know, uh, Oh, yeah, so who, who's to say? I would hope, I would pray that he's still not, you know, on uh, that. But and that maybe he learned his lesson and just stopped doing it. But who's to say? He had all those women back there, and and, and as they got older and kind of aged out, they would recruit younger, and they would be having sex with these. And and that, the caller when she called in. She was saying how, uh, hello? Okay. 
<laughs> okay, I had to turn the uh, conference thing back on because it times itself out after a while. But um, so if anybody's calling in, you probably got about a good 10 more minutes because we're going to wrap up in about a good 10 more minutes. So if you want to call in, uh, last call. Like they do at the club. <laughs> like they do at the club. Last call. But um, <laughs> what uh, the caller was saying about his wife, Andrea Kelly. Um, Andrea Kelly met her, I mean, got married to uh, Kells when Lizette was still with him. The one who had caught the mono and found out he, was, he had got married and mm -hmm. she almost died and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, she, for all these people around that certain time to witness stuff, witness these young girls, witness the threesomes and all that, like she was saying, a lot of people agree that Andrea, um, she's not telling the whole story. And it's like, what makes me mad is how you come out and you tell, oh, he did this, and oh, he beat me in the back of his truck, and I could have died because his arm was on my neck. And I mean, we done heard the story over and over again, and I believe the story. Mm -hmm. And I hate that it happened to her. Everything that he's done to anybody, I really hate that it happened to her. But these people coming out, they're telling, even the people on the show, mm -hmm. they're not telling everything. I think they're they not telling everything or not even step up because I, I truly believe if this woman said up there and drop names, man, drop was, names, yep, drop that names. too. We need a list of all them girls, all them young girls, because like I said, I believe is way it's more. a laundry list of them. Wait, <laughs> this man was he was the man. For so many years, the man for so mm -hmm. many years, hanging around high schools every day, hanging out with children every day, um, at the malls, at the McDonald's, where all the kids hang out, all the men and security guards and personal assistants and other women and girls that he would have recruit. I mean, I believe it's a long list. It is. A long list of girls out there that somebody needs to do more to bring a lot of people a lot of justice. Even if they can't press charges anymore. Be the voice that they can be. Some people know what has happened to them, but they can't. It, it just won't. There's not no way that they can actually bring it out. But if somebody else knows, yes, especially nice. when they recruited somebody and brought them in on that, Sometimes people tell you one thing, you get somewhere in a situation, you don't know how to leave, you want to leave, but you don't know what to do to leave, and then somebody start giving or showing you what you've been looking all over for, and it's finally there, and you getting it, money, love, anything, just being around people sometimes. He knew that, because he knew what he wanted. All the, uh, what he didn't really get when he was younger. Um, what was that lady name? Uh, the the doctor. Uh, what was her name? Um, Dr. Lena McLean. Somebody interviewed her, the older lady that was on the show. Um, she They interviewed her and she had claimed, you know, at a very young age, she was really impressed. You know, she knew he was gen genuine. Um, he was a uh, genius material. She knew. Uh, they said, did he ever like tell you about his home life? Like tell you exactly what happened to him or, uh, you know, who hurt him or anything like that. She was like, no, he never told me, but she knew. And they was like, how you knew? See, this is one thing about older people. They be knowing. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to tell them sometimes. Um, she said, I knew. It was all in his music. She said, and this was when he was still a teenager, when she was working with him. Um, she said he was very aggressive, you know, with his language and with his music. Um, she used to have to tell him over and over and over and over and over again. 
is not acceptable in school. This is not acceptable. You talking like that. Mm-hmm. You, 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 you know, I'm going to just say he must have had a really filthy mouth um, in school. And he was, you know, around her as, you know, his elder. And she would, you know, correct him. And she also told him, Robert, you need to stop hanging around all them young girls. You need to stop, you know, mingling, associating with them young girls. Mm -hmm. You, You shouldn't be doing that. She said she told him over and over and over again to leave the young girls alone. I think she was probably one of few who probably actually did something. And Sparkle was like the only one who really, you know, pressed the issue so much to take the issue to court when it came down to her knees. Yeah. Um, you know, that video. Ugh. Mm. I don't know if you saw that video, but I saw that video yeah. like at least 15. Something that I'd rather not ever see again. Um, something that I'd rather not ever see again. Everybody believed it was him. But you know, they couldn't get the charges to stick. And she blamed herself for that, but she tried. You and know, I can at least say, she, I give her, you know, credit for trying because a lot of people that knew something would stick, they didn't speak up because he might, you know what? That's one thing I feel bad with celebrities when they do have money, they get away with stuff for so long and then, you know, People can still bring justice for somebody that stuff has happened to through a celebrity, but people won't speak up because he won't be able to do he that was money. Paying, he was paying all their bills. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. He probably still to this day still doing people, doing things for people not to come expose him. Mm-hmm. And making that he made a lot of people sign them NDA, you know, disclosures. Mm-hmm. So they couldn't speak. But I'm like, to hell with all them disclosures. <laughs> to hell with all them disclosures. Yeah. If you sign anything that this man made you sign and you was there to witness a lot of stuff, he and you write designs, he, he might slip up. She said he thinks he'll slip up if he don't get help. And you're right. Believe Samantha so believes he really needs to get help. And I believe he really needs to get help too. But I don't think he's going to just purposely put himself out there nope. to get help. And that's what went on with Bill Cosby. He probably looking at that. Like people like him. Jail. Like Weinstein, Cosby, mm-hmm. and the whole slew of other men out there. Yep. They usually be forced to get that help. Oh, I'm caught. I'm caught. Okay, I need help. Forgive me. I didn't know what I was doing. Oh, this happened to me when I was little. And they start bringing all the excuses. And, you know, I just need help. The love of money. You ain't lying. You ain't lying. lying. (laughs) For the love of money. Who who made the, who saw that song? For the love of money. People still don't have money. New Jack City. New Jack City. That's it. Let's see. I'm not watching all the time now. <laughs> no, that was no, that was my that was my movie back in the day. That was my movie back in the day. But yeah, um that's that pretty much uh I know we didn't cover every single detail in the show, but we hit on some uh some big points throughout the show. Um, One thing, like I said, again, uh, I think people who are coming, and this is what I'm going to leave off on this note. I don't think anybody's trying to call in right now. Again, thanks to the caller that did call in earlier because she made a lot of, um, made a lot of points too. And uh, I just want to say my last little some of these people are not telling the whole story. And like the girl who, uh, what was her name? Um, Javante. Like she saw and others saw 
him having sex with Aaliyah. But they won't say exactly what was going on. And we don't need to know all the details. But it's things like that. If you're going to tell the story, tell the story. Don't leave out other people that he might have done it with. And you only speak on this one person because they were famous. And because everybody knew them. I'm sure there was a lot of unknowns. A lot of unknown people uh, who lives mattered just as much as Aaliyah, rest in peace, um, that they're not speaking on. So that's what I think. Um, as far as R. Kelly and his brother, um, Carrie, uh, I think they should... The person who they said allegedly abused them, which was their sister, um, I think they should speak out because it could help others. A lot of men don't want to speak out when they are abused sexually as a child. Um, more so when they're abused by men because it's, it's something about their manhood that they feel was taken from them along with their innocence. Mm -hmm. They feel their manhood was taken from them and that they are a punk or that they weak or that they really gay mm -hmm. or that they really wanted it because it was the same sex. So a lot of them don't always want to um, come forward. And I do not agree with any of those terms. If you're abused and you're a child, you have no voice, and that's just what I feel. I would never, again, pass judgment on a child or blame a child because, again, I know people personally who have been through stuff like that. Um, but I think for R. Kelly to truly heal and possibly stop hurting others, he need to face his demons exactly and quit keeping stuff under the rugs like so many of us do. And it happens a lot in black families and I'm black. So I'm just speaking from a black experience. I'm sure there's probably white people, Mexican Africans probably watching my live or will eventually see it. And I know things like that happen in all families, but with black people from my experience, from my home, my relatives, homes, my friends, homes, People I know in church and school, I boy, if I if I sat here and said every single person that I know for a fact was abused, raped, um, and sexually assaulted as a child, I would be on here for the rest of the night. And a lot of people who watching my lives and who are friends with me, um, would just be like, dang. You know, but I, I would never do nothing like that. I would never do anything like that. Mm -hmm. But that happened so many times and so many families over and over again because they just keep it swept under the rug. Parents don't want to face that it's their husbands and their boyfriends and their sons that's, you know, raping and molesting their daughters and their nieces and their cousins. And that has to end. That has to end. Like today, no more keeping stuff under the rug. You know, take action. Don't be ashamed, right, designs? Don't be ashamed to tell. Don't be ashamed to press charges. If your parents don't believe you, um, go to a teacher. Go to a counselor. Hell, go to the mailman. Somebody going to believe Somebody you. Somebody going to listen. Keep telling your story, and it will eventually reach the right ears. And especially when a man has young daughters and he see them, they beautiful and everything like that. They want to protect their child from somebody on the street, but sometimes the protection is needed in the house. Right in the house. Right in the house. And that's why when I was, um, when I had my sons, my sons is 21 and 17 now. But whenever I had nieces over, little cousins, little girls, Y'all go to the farthest corner of the basement. Girls, y'all go in my room. <laughs> we all gonna make a <laughs> pallet on the floor. We, I mean, and then it's my own sons. Not to say I think they would have done anything, but I done seen it happen. 
there is somebody in my family right now who went to prison prison for eight years for repeatedly having sex, your intercourse with another cousin of mine. It happens right in the house and nobody knew. And I'm not going to say no names. I mean, if you live in my city and you know me, you probably know who it was. So it's not like it's not public knowledge that a lot of people in our area know, but I won't say the names. Um, it happens right in the household. And it does. Right in the and household. All I'm saying is, if you protecting your child the way every, most people put out there to be, when they leaving out the door, they be, or when they even on their cell phone, or some people will say, you know, they monitor the phone, cell phone. Monitor. Mm -hmm. Monitor when your child is coming and saying, or even acting another way. If you notice, like they said, it was monitor. It's a phone. It's a cell phone nowadays. If somebody that social media, too. yeah, that's a way that that's a bigger way. Mm -hmm. And I do feel that a lot of times when something happens to people, and you don't want everybody to know, it's what you put out there too. But don't not do anything if something is going on, and it just don't have to be your child, or your family member. If you know something, you know something. I feel like to... If you know something, say something. Say something. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <sighs> I'm just... I'm just still appalled on how many people knew and didn't say anything. But, again, that ain't the end of the kills. That ain't the end. Um, another show is going to be coming on on Lifetime. So I will do a follow-up review on this situation. Um, and again, I'm getting that book and I'm not advertising that book. They ain't paying me uh, one penny to tell y'all <laughs> about this book. But the book is called Forever Daddy's Girl. And what's that? What's that design say? Girl, I do the same. Yep, I do the same. I hate when people have boys and girls in their house. And they don't monitor them, even if it's their family member coming over to spend a night. You got to know where them kids sleeping at night. Make sure they not. And we don't want to. We don't want to think about our oh, little no. sons or our cousins messing with the little girls in the family. We don't want to think about stuff like that. You know, everybody thinks their sons and their daughters. Oh, that. That would never happen. You know, I raised them right. They go to church every Sunday. I mean, I'm, it happens all the time, every day, day in and out. Day in and out. I think so, too. And you have to be careful. And I think when it comes to people staying at night, it's okay to stay at night, but everybody, we all curious about something at every age. Uh huh. I don't care if it's not at puberty age, any, and that's the that's the what they call the wild hair. That pre puberty <laughs> when they when they get right to the boys understanding what that thing do, like what it really do. What they say open up like, the door. <laughs> what it really do, and she down there like, ooh, what's that? Ooh, you know. I mean, you have to be careful because kids are curious. They are curious. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes the more you say, don't do this, don't do that, they get more curious. Mm -hmm. So you just have to um, you have to monitor. Stay on them. I don't care if they get mad. Mom, why you got to look at my phone? That's what you're doing right. Because <laughs> we've all been there in some kind of way. When somebody <laughs> tells you something, you be like, mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, LaShawn. I'm just now seeing some of y'all comments. Hey, sis, low. Hey, LaShawn. I'm sorry. I'm just now seeing some of y'all comments. Uh, let's see. LaShawn said, so do you think Sparkle knew what was going on before she brought her niece to... I think they all knew. I think everybody knew. Um, um, I mean, okay, the producers knew. The security guards knew. The uh, brothers knew. The other girls knew. Um, who else? Uh, his his personal assistants knew. He has studios with all these young girls in different rooms. 
I'm going to have to say, I believe everybody knew something. Mm -hmm. But like they said, um, the caller said earlier that Sparkle had said in an interview that um, she had ended her contract with him. And so she didn't bring, bleh, didn't bring her niece oh, around anymore. Yeah. Uh, but she didn't realize that the family was still dealing with kills. So that's how her niece got back around him or something. Yes. So I don't believe that she knew that he was doing something to her until she saw what everybody else saw. <laughs> what everybody else saw I in that video. That. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm there's just some I things you don't want to see again, that, especially somebody that, urinating on somebody. I don't ever want to see that again. That, that, that is very degrading. <laughs> that is very degrading. You might as well stuff somebody's head in a pile of poop. And I mean, that is very degrading. So I, I think she um, knew about others. And that's why I said a lot of these people around him, they need to tell. If you're going to tell, don't tell bits and pieces. Don't have step. Come on, fool. Yeah, don't tell bits and pieces. If he, if y'all see him have sex with fifty young girls, then say he has sex with fifty young girls. I mean, it's I don't know. I don't know. See, y'all about to get me started. Cause I, 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 pedophiles. I I know they got a special place in hell. I know they got a special place in hell. Exactly. <laughs> you know, designs by me said you're really good. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's my sister friend, Samantha. We go back like four flats on a Cadillac. <laughs> and she's also my younger son's auntie. So we we real close. We real cool. <laughs> yeah, we we real cool. And I like having her as a co-host because... <laughs> We kind of like, kind of play off each other, but she's, ooh, she's very like, she's very funny. Y'all, if y'all hung around her one day off camera, she be having me in stitches. <laughs> I mean, in stitches, like all the time. <laughs> like seriously. <laughs> but yeah. So she said you never know it will help others talking will empty your soul yes. I agree I agree um oh that's Keisha hey Keisha you should have called in <laughs> you should have called in Keisha that's Keisha <laughs> that's Keisha Keisha it's Keisha I didn't I didn't I didn't know that you were under LaShawn Oh, you said Sam funny. Keisha, no. <laughs> hey, Keisha. Shit. Actually, both of y'all funny as hell. Sure. Right. Keisha, I'm going to put you on the show one day. Don't, don't worry. And you stay right around the corner. I can see her house, the back of her house from my house, through the houses. Oh, yeah. If you stand on my porch and look between the houses mm. on my block, you can see they, they uh, back porch. Okay. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh -huh. But oh, we're in Omaha, Nebraska. Designs. Mm -hmm. We're in Omaha. Keisha says she down. Girl. All right. <laughs> I got you. I got you. I got you, honey. Tell my cut and I said hello. Mm -hmm. Tell my cut and I said hello. But anyway, when are you in this mess? You think you're the only one in the world is happening to? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. That is true. Designs. That is very true. There was that is very true. There were times when I was younger and things was going on in my life, and I was so young. I was like. I had told friends before, is this what's supposed to happen? Is this how it really is? Is this, I mean, I'm like, I must be really special. I mean, you don't know how to feel when you're a young child and things happen to you that shouldn't happen. You don't know how to feel. And sometimes you feel like it's just supposed to be like that. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's just supposed to be like that. And then to blame the children, that's what hurt me the most when people blame the children and say 
they knew. Like the girl who wrote the book, I brought that book up because <clears throat> she had said she had liked R. Kelly since she was five. And I'm sure, yeah. of course, we should, they probably shouldn't be listening to that kind of music then. But come on now. I'm sure everybody on this live can raise their hand and attest to them being a child and their mama and daddy playing some kind of blues around you, <laughs> some kind of rap around you, yes. some kind yes, of R&B yes. around you that you should not be listening to. <laughs> and it could be at a party, at a gathering, they playing card games, spades, birthday party. You know how them parties turn from a birthday party to a grown folks party? <laughs> Everyone has you know? <laughs> So... I'm going to just say that and give her a pass at five <laughs> for liking R. Kelly. But the way she stalked him and hunted him down and begged people to meet him because she wanted him. Not because she was a big fan, because she was a fan, but she wanted him. And she did everything possible. And she was a teenager, like 14 years old. Yeah. That book, again, is called Forever Daddy's Girl. Um, the price I saw was $28. Um, that was at Walmart. Uh, Barnes and Nobles got it used as low as $3.99. But like the new books, it's probably going to be about $20 to get a new one. Mm. And Barnes and Nobles got it for twenty eight ninety five, but I'm sure you can find cheaper ones if you go on Amazon or somewhere. Oh, okay. You know, you can always find used books for little to nothing. But I'm going to get that book because when Kaya was reading it on her YouTube channel the other day, I'm telling y'all, I was I had my little cup, I had my little high skins, and I was sitting there listening to Kaya. You know, Kaya funny as hell. Kaya is funny as hell. So when she was reading it and making her facial gestures and her funny, funny remarks, I was like, I was so gagging. I was so gagging. But I, it was very interesting um, to hear Kaya read from the book. So, yeah, I definitely want to get the book. The book. <laughs> but... <laughs> But yeah, any last things you want to say? I know we've been on here for like an hour and a half. But it was, I think it was a good show. It was. I think we did a good show. <laughs> um, we hit on a lot of points. Um, Kels, his sisters, his the psychologist, um, his wife. Uh, yeah. Sparko. Um... Yeah, we hit on a lot of things. It was so much. It was so much. So many people they interviewed. But um, I remember when, uh, who was that guy? Um, Torre. Remember Torre from uh, BET? Uh, let me show this real quick. Torre posted this on his um, Twitter the other day. He said the day after BET aired his R. Kelly interview way back in the day, um, his people called BET and threatened to sue if they ever aired it again. That was that interview when he asked R. Kelly, do you really like young girls? Do you really like teenage girls? And R. Kelly's response was, what age are we referring to? He never know. said he didn't like he teenage didn't girls. He never said, oh, only if they're 18 and up. He said, <laughs> he said, and I'm sure you can find the video on YouTube or somewhere. He said, what age are we exactly referring to? So that was the day after that they called and um, threatened BET. To sue if they ever showed that again. He said he was like, What grounds can they sue? He had no idea, but BET quickly capitulated and put the tape on the shelf never to air again. That's all this is wrong with right there. That's crazy. And then um one last thing I want to show y'all. I hit on it earlier, but then I forgot. We got talking about something else. 
but it was about Leah's <laughs> mom, how she was trying to say that um, one of the girls on the show who was being interviewed, Javante, was saying how she was lying about Aaliyah having sex with uh, Kells at 15. And this is what she said. The woman and so-called backup singer that describes seeing, meeting, or even breathing the same air as my daughter Aaliyah is lying and is a liar. Aaliyah's mom, Miss Halton, noted she and her husband were always on tour with Aaliyah and that they have never seen her before anywhere on planet Earth until now. Halton doesn't want these lies and fabrications to taint her daughter's legacy. And then she went on to say, my daughter only wanted to realize her dream of sharing her talent with the world and give her all performing on stage and in front of the camera for the fans she adores so much. Um, she continued to say she realized that dream, thanks to those true fans who still love and support her like us, um, her legacy unconditionally to this day. Shame on all those involved in this project who thought it was kosher to drag Aaliyah's name into a situation that has nothing to do with her today. Halton concluded, once again, this will not be tolerated. What do you think about that as far as... Oh, and I'm sorry, y'all. I meant to get on this earlier. I, we was so all over and I forgot. I had brought it up, but then forgot to go into details about it. But do you think her mom is in denial? Exactly. And if she don't want to accept what she probably know. And do I believe that they was always on tour with her? No. I don't either. I don't believe for one minute. That her mom and dad, mom and dad, was always on tour with her and knew of her whereabouts at all times. Javante said on the uh, show last night that they used to sneak Aaliyah out all the time at nighttime when Aaliyah was 12 and 13 and 14. Um, and she said they even, uh, on, the, on the buses, on the tour bus, can you picture parents being on a tour bus? No, are they, they on that? Right. If they if they were anywhere where Aaliyah was doing music or dancing for R. Kelly or it, whoever, if they was there, they was not there. In direct there, whatever. Yeah. They was. They're probably there, but maybe ahead at the hotel or in a or car so, driving yeah. behind the they tour bus. On, they were on that bus. I mean, because I, I, mm. not and saying, then for her to say. This has nothing to do with Aaliyah's legacy today. This has a lot to do about Aaliyah because she was like one of the first ones who he allegedly slept with when she was underage. They got married. Her parents knew she was married. At 15. At 15 knew that they had, you know, those documents that was doctored up. How can you sit there and say... That they were not having sex when she was 15, when they were married. What do you do when you marry? <laughs> you just go down to the courthouse, well, the hotel room where they really got married, to sign a certificate saying you married, just to say you married, mm -hmm. and you ain't having no relations, as Medea would say. <laughs> and I believe that they, they, they have parents. Were paid off. There it is. Like a lot of them other people. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of allegations mm -hmm. that he paid a lot of people off. Paid a lot of people off. And um, nobody wants to keep rehashing this and bringing Aaliyah up into it. But she is a part of this story. I don't know. A big she, part. She's a big mother, part of this that's story. That's what her mother is speaking of now. I may mean, not have seen before had before, but I believe her mom was speaking up like she was there to cover up. The yeah, like she was that, really the there. Because how did your daughter at the age of 15 end up getting married to a man falsifying documents if you were there? And they came home to you and your husband. I do remember saying this part of the movie. 
They came home when they announced it. They pissed. They was in festivity. They were so hot about it. You see what Design said? The mama is trying to wash her hands, and that is what I believe exactly. too. Designs. Not personally to uh, protect Aaliyah's legacy. Um, I think it's to protect her and her husband and a family. Because again, how can you say she was not having sex with him at 15 when they were married at 15? At 15? He what? was 20 freaking 7. Mm -hmm. 20 freaking 7. Sleeping with a 15. Now they got married at 15. They were having sex before then. Just like the cousin said, they were sneaking her outside. And probably once he got wind, R. Kelly got wind of knowing Aaliyah, it was more time for her to be snuck to him and her parents in the house sleeping. Right. And then after um, Javante said um, on the show, after everybody busted him having sex with Aaliyah on the tour bus, <laughs> it was like the whole crew just slowly crumbled, just slowly fell apart because they had looked up to him. You know, the ones he wasn't having sex with. You know, the other, the ones in the in his crew. Dancers, singers, you know. They had looked up to him and respected him a lot and admired him a lot. And when they realized he was having sex with a 14, 15 year old girl, they were kind of all like hurt. Like, dude. <laughs> dude. And she's 14. You are 27 years old. Almost 30. Mm -hmm. I, Just like it said, she said, oh, here, mama, if mama wasn't too close, they got a way to get married. Exactly. And if she was always saying, if they always was there, she could have said, we tried our best to be there. You know, nobody's perfect. That was probably one of the times they slipped away. But don't say she was always there with her daughter because she's lying. And just like Zion's right, be said, the mama wants the fame and the and money, money, but just like I said, she want she want to be like she was 100 and knew everything and had her daughter under control, which she did not. But behind closed doors, I'm sure, I'm almost positive, he was taking care of mama and daddy dang on good. But the, they didn't prepare, her parents for and I think what's going on with R. Kelly and Aaliyah is that he would impregnate her, or if he did, Oh, they will get rid of it. But when they when they thought that she was pregnant, let's get married, this and that. Mm -hmm. The parents was with anything but probably him marrying their daughter. They knew after so long, your child might be talented, but your child wasn't discovered as she was when she passed on to God. May her soul rest in peace. But her mama is full of it. Yep. And where's her dad? What does he have to say? I don't know. Probably because the mama were the parents of that family, and he better not get nowhere on no interview saying nothing that was wrong. I can't like, remember. Is her father still living? I can't. Re I honestly can't remember if he's even still well, alive. If, but he's not, if he's not, I apologize. He's, but, but still, um, I don't remember. The mom was full of it, and she know. And nobody is dragging her daughter name through the mud. But once you, once you, it could be a, a celebrity or non-celebrity. But once you bring up something, people, you exactly say so. The mama wasn't too close. They got a way to get married. Exactly. Exactly. But you know where your daughter at all times. So was you in the hotel room next door while they were saying they I do's? Girl, don't yeah, they all the time. Two of us. It's like the time right? he said, the mama sold her daughter. Now I feel that the mama know what she done is wrong. She and can't I'm sure she felt her guilty. Right. Like her daughter died. Probably before they could even make peace about that situation because her daughter at that time oh, yeah. was still making money, still producing music, starring in movies, on TV shows. I mean, she was still bringing in that money. And then what happened to Aaliyah and everybody else that was on that plane was a devastating tragedy. Right, but but I think if Aaliyah never passed away, I don't ever think that her mom would have truly faced him 
on the situation. No, no, it was no. like they annulled the marriage, and that was it. And, and that was it. No charges. No, no charges. No taking him to court. None of that. It was just like it was just swept under the rug. They got what they wanted. He probably paid them a lot of money. Matter of fact, he also gave her a um, hundred thousand dollars to not uh, press charges. That's what he gave Aaliyah. Mm -hmm. That's what he gave Aaliyah. Allegedly, that's what they said on the show. That's what they said on the show. A hundred thousand um, dollars for Leah to not because I'm sure she had eventually got to that age where, like most child, most children, this ain't right. This ain't right. This man is taking advantage of me. Mm -hmm. This ain't right. He's old enough to be my my uh daddy. You know this ain't right. <laughs> but instead of her going to the police or pressing charges for you know sexual assault, whatever. He gave her a hundred thousand dollars. Like that ain't even enough, though. That ain't even enough. I mean, not compared to his worth, but still, at the time, you know, they probably we could give her something versus nothing. But just like the nine by V says, the truth is the truth, and it set him set a lot of people free. But a lot of us, we know, and we do need to figure it out. Speak up, because. You wanted to be spoke up if it was you. Yep, you write designs. It would be more to the story because I I think I don't know. I did, I didn't know her personally, Aaliyah personally, but from what I do know, she was a very special person, a very special person. Mm -hmm. And I honestly believe if she did not pass away, that eventually she might have been one of those me too's. But a lot sooner than now. You know what I mean? A lot sooner than now. Mm -hmm. um, especially after all the other allegations came out with all the other girls and Sparkle's niece and, you know, all the other situations. I honestly think that she probably would have been the one. The one, you know, to speak out on this about him. But because she's gone, we just don't know. Um I'm just glad these ladies are bold enough and strong enough and courageous enough and everybody else. Do you know how many people they tried to get on this show and how many people they, that turned down big celebrities that turned down being interviewed? They didn't want to get involved. A lot of celebrities turned down Lifetime and said they did not want to be involved. There's people still who don't want to deal with the issue. Mm. So, mm, I, I that's <laughs> it for me. That's it for me. Well, I just want to thank everybody and <laughs> Definitely, 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 definitely. Let me turn the phones off. I still got the phone conference system on. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yes, I want to thank everybody who came into the live tonight, the people who called in, um, the people who watching, even if you didn't comment, I appreciate you guys tuning in to uh, Surviving R. Kelly, part one and two. Uh, we are sisters from another mister. <laughs> oh, this was another review brought to you by sisters from another mister. <laughs> but anyway you guys um i have to see i think i haven't checked my listings but i know i got it programmed on my dvr for uh the last um series of surviving r kelly i'm gonna watch it i'm gonna review it i'm gonna take some notes and i'll come back again this weekend to speak about it if they show it this weekend um, she was gonna be a bigger star than him. She was. Mm -hmm. Yes, she would. I do believe mm -hmm. that. I I think Aaliyah would be like one of the biggest stars to this day, even at her age that she would be this day. Oh, yeah. Because a lot of people in the R and B world who have passed on, or just for some reason stopped recording. I don't know why. Like even. 
people like Tevin Campbell. There's just so many great musicians and artists from back in the day that needs to be on the platform today. Come home. (laughs) Please come home to mama. Because this stuff that we got out here now. I'm confused. You confused? I, I don't even li- I swear. And I was just saying that earlier. I don't even listen to music no more. If it ain't some throwback, I don't even listen to music no more. <laughs> but seriously, y'all, thank y'all for tuning in. Love you too, Designs by Z and everybody yes. else who was in the chat. Um, let's see. We had uh, Designs by V in the chat, Keisha in the chat, Cislo in the chat. Um, who else was it? Uh, uh, yeah, Keisha go by LaShawn, by LaShawn Brown. Um, I, I, it's a habit. Keisha, that's my, that's my, that's my girl. Miss Booker was in the chat. Um, did I get everybody? Oh, Tama Mama Jamma was in the chat. And, um, and she made a good point too, that part of it was the parents to monitor their kids. And that's a big conversation that, you know, we hit on, uh, hit on earlier. Me and Samantha was keep your kids close, monitor your kids. Miss Hogg was in the chat. Um, shout out to everybody that was in the chat. If I miss your name, it's because, or miss your comment, it's because, you know, the, uh, comment section, we trying to watch the video of us at the same time and then flipping back and forth. Um, between the actual live to see the comments. So not that we're ignoring you. I would never do that. I love each and every one of you. Thank you for tuning in. Signing out, Sam. <laughs> Deuces. <laughs> in the meantime and in between time, Prime Time Squad, stay safe, be blessed. Happy, happy New Year's. And we out. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.